So hi there everyone, my name is Peter Dove. I'm a coach at Dressage Training TV and author of the book Master Dressage. I'll be leading the lesson today, although other lessons may be led by Mary or by Ali Wakelin as well. Uh, I'm, as I said earlier, I'm quite excited about this. I've been a bit hyped up about it all day. I love this particular lesson on alignment. It's really important. It's the foundation for everything. Uh, you need to have correct alignment. You need to have correct angles uh, for, for it all to work. You know, the moment those angles break down, the moment you lose neutral spine, there's all kinds of consequences which happen uh, to you and to your horse, uh, wh which, you know, make it more difficult for you and for the horse as well. There's a lot of talk about uh, shoulder hip heel alignment in, dress in dressage and riding in flat work. And, you know, I often think that uh, mere lip service is paid to the idea of shoulder hip heel and we see a lot of riders in lots of different non-shoulder hip heel alignments. Um, basically when I look at a rider I imagine if I was to suddenly make the horse disappear from underneath the rider would they land on their feet? Would they uh, land on their heels and fall backwards? So you can maybe show an example of that Millie. So, so here, Millie would probably, uh, you know, land on her heels and then fall backwards. Would they fall forwards on their face if they're two tip forwards? And that's a really good uh, visual for you to think about of, of the initial alignment for a rider. Now, why are we so concerned about shoulder, hip, heel? And why are we concerned with this idea that the rider could just suddenly plop down and uh, land on their feet in an on-horse position? Eh? She's like, what's you doing? Um, the reason this is really important is uh, for flat work, we're looking for an ideal between balance and security. So if you were heel down, leg further forward, you're automatically putting yourself behind the movement. And if the horse were to suddenly accelerate, it's really difficult for you to stay up with the horse and stay up with the power of the horse. If you were two leg back underneath you and tip forwards and, and so on, then of course as soon as the horse decelerates, you're in a very weak position to stabilize yourself. So shoulder hip heel is a very good neutral place for you to be to be able to cope with acceleration and deceleration. A short stirrup on the other hand ends up with all of the weight in your backside, the knee is up, yeah. <laughs> zero balance like this. Uh, all the way ends up down in your seat. If the, you're always behind the movement, you're always heavy in the horse's back, it, the horse is going to find it very difficult for you, uh, for it to lift its back up and work correctly. So uh, this is too short. So this is definitely not 45 degrees. You did have to go up hugely, didn't you? Yeah, to, to make this happen. So uh, if, I, if I had a rider in front of me like this, uh, I would immediately lengthen the stirrups uh, before I did any of the other adjustments that you've seen. So, you know, the legs over the front, the, the seat scooting forward into the right place. Um, and, I'm, and I'm not going to do that uh, with you. I just wanted to, to show uh, the, that being there. When the, when the thigh is at 45 degrees, it's, it's in that kind of angle where it can help support your upper body. You know, it can help um, when the horse decelerates, it can help keep your upper body behind your thighs. That's another downside of having the, the thigh too straight, is if it's too straight and the horse suddenly slows down, you're very easily going to go over your thigh and tip forwards as well. Okay, so shall I leave Kirsten to... Yeah, you can put them down now. Thank you. <laughs> I guess what we'll deal with, uh, so that we don't take up too long, is hollow and round, and some of the corrections that need to be made there, and we'll and we'll do uh, leaning back and and leaning forwards as well. So if I I just go uh, hollow back and upright, Millie, for me. That's it. So and and then try and grow tall, and and that's better. Yeah, that's more like it. Okay. So there's two corrections that for this type of rider that you're going to have to make, and Millie is doing a very uh, extreme <laughs> version of this. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen anybody riding like that, um, but, but I have seen fairly close to that. Uh, so, could you imagine perhaps what standard corrections you might be making to this person? You know, sit up tall isn't going to do it. Relax isn't going to do it. Uh, you know, lean back 
we, if we ask them to lean back, then you know they'll kind of end up back that way. Uh, so we have to have some very specific corrections we can make, and we make those corrections initially on the, the rider's sternum, so this kind of position, uh, and on their pelvis. So what I would say to this rider, and if I stand back this way, uh, I'd get them to sit more on their pockets, on the back of the back of the po pockets. So tilt the pelt. That's it. Now actually, Millie's doing a really good bad job for me of, of following my instructions. And what you've seen here is Millie still has a hollow in her back, but she's she's leaning backwards at the same time. Another way you can say go go hollow forward again for me. Another way you can say to the rider as well is if you grab hold of the back of their um, britches, and Millie's got a nice little um, loop belt loop there for me to do it, and and feel it, pull her back and say fill out or, or say fill out against my hand so push against my hand and uh, or pull back that way and you can get them to adjust their pelvis and that's really the first port of call is to, to sort the pelvis out so can you do bad good y bad good <laughs> uh, so Millie's got her pelvis more in the right place but you can see actually what's happened she's kept the same angle in her upper body as she's brought her pelvis back and she's now behind the vertical and and you know that's another th way you can see it going wrong and, and what you're looking at, really, is the length of the rider's front in comparison to the length of the rider's back. Yes. So Tamara asks, how much uh, difference can the saddle make to the rider's ability to get the right position? Uh, quite a bit. You know, uh, it doesn't make it impossible. Generally, it doesn't make it impossible. I mean, some saddles, you feel like you're working very hard to, to, to get it right. Uh, usually the rider can get the right position despite the saddle, but you know, saddles will make a difference. If you've got a saddle that is uh, high in the front and low in the back, so the cantle is lower, the pommel is higher, you'll find yourself sliding down the saddle and find it really difficult to not land too far back, to not be tipped forwards, to not be behind the movement. I mean, we've got a mare um, that uh, is hugely up in front and you put a saddle on her and you know you just kind of feel like the horse is coming out from you that way and, and for you to stay up with the horse and she's quite powerful too to, for you to stay up with her is really hard work you know uh, there's a real uh, trend in having thigh blocks in dressage saddles and, and the I find with thigh blocks and, and, and saddles that put you in a certain place, well, you know, it's very difficult because I, I, my body's different to everybody else's body and, you know, it might put you in a place that isn't suitable for you. It might put you in a place that isn't suitable for your horse. It might put you in a place that isn't suitable for you and the horse at that stage of training that the horse is at. You know, if you've got a thigh block that makes your thigh too long and you're riding a horse which is unbalanced, on its forehand, you know, you're going to find yourself over your thighs uh, and in a very difficult place, whereas you might want to be in a place where you have a slightly shorter stirrup and be able to stay back and lift the horse more up in front. Uh, next lesson, we're going to be talking about the seat and core strength. You're going to learn uh, how to put tone in the right points in your body. You're going to learn how to get tempo control over the horse in walk. You're going to learn how your seat bones move, how you can tell which hind legs are coming underneath you, for instance. Uh, all of these techniques that we're going to discuss will give you a much more stable feel on the horse and much more control over what's happening underneath you. Uh, thank you very much for joining and uh, no doubt I'll speak to you in the forums and through separate bits of video that we'll be putting out. Thank you very much.